Welcome back to Van of Action, the van build series. We're taking our 2018 Dodge Promaster van and turning it into a family camper. Along the way, we're sharing the journey. And one of the members of our great community, a subscriber named Southern Oregon, asked a question. And thanks so much for doing that. I love it when that happens. But he or she asked for more detail about the 12 volt wiring system. I've done several overviews of it and like from a high altitude kind of talks about it. But they said, uh, you know, can you tell us how to, what about the connectors and the fuses and, and the wire size and that kind of thing. So we're going to take a deep dive into that now. And I'm a carpenter, so I'm going to be using a lot of the words. I might even be making them up. If you know about this kind of thing and you want to watch along, feel free to jump in at the end with some comments and correct me on the things that I'm saying wrong. I'm explaining what I did and how I did it. And my system was working like there's no tomorrow. So I'm very comfortable sharing that. Well, I've got a problem. I want to share enough information in this video that people who don't know anything about 12 volt systems are comfortable giving them a shot, but I don't want it to turn into a feature film. And so I'm going to break this into two parts. This is part one, roughing in the van before you start to finish the inside at all. There'll be a link at the end of this to part two, and there'll be a, which will be the connecting of the, fi the fixtures when the van's almost finished. There'll also be a link to the major roughing in video that talks about sizes of wires and protecting and all the rest of it. So you should look at all three videos, not in sequence, but just before you get started. Okay, right off, first start at the very basics. Every van is going to have a battery. The battery stores the energy that you're going to use. Every battery has two terminals. It has a black terminal and it has a red terminal. The red terminal is the positive terminal. That's the one that has the energy. The energy comes out of the battery and through the red terminal. The black terminal is the negative terminal and the energy from the circuits go back into the battery on the black terminal. Now let's just take a look at a simple light. If you were running a simple light, the power goes from the battery to the light to charge the light up and then the power has to come back from the light to the battery along the black wire that completes the circuit on a simple light the power has to go up uninterrupted to the light come back uninterrupted to the battery that's a simple circuit every light every circuit every every usb port in the van would be wired in theory exactly that way but think about it if you did that, you'd have a whole bunch of wires coming off that one terminal, one to the USB port, one to another set of lights, one to a, their cooler, one to the fan. It'd be just crazy to have that many wires tried to wrap around that one terminal. That's one issue. The second issue is that wouldn't be safe. There'd be no way to govern or manage how much power was coming out of the battery into each wire. So each wire could, in theory, become overloaded, and that wouldn't be safe. So there's a way to handle that. It's the fuse panel. Fuse panels come in all kinds of different shapes and sizes, but they all do essentially the same thing. They take the energy from the battery in a big, thick wire and run it to the red terminal on the fuse panel itself. And from there, the, wire, the energy is distributed to all the individual circuits and the little red wires. And then the little black wires that are out the van come back to the top of the fuse panel and they go to a big, fat black wire that goes back to the battery system itself. You don't need to worry about how big that wire needs to be. Uh, your fuse panel will tell you what it's rated for. The thing to remember is your fuse panel can go anywhere in the van you want it to. It does not have to be beside the batteries. It can be in the front of the cab if you want it to be. It can be in the back of the cab if you want it to be. The thing to remember is though that when you need your fuse panel normally is when you've blown a fuse which means the lights night might not be working. So you want to have it someplace easy to get to, someplace where you're not going to unpack a lot of stuff to get at it, and someplace where it's easy to find. And so I've placed mine at the back of my basement, up near the top and right by the door. But it's important to sort out where you want your fuse panel to be, because that's where you start to pull all your wires from. Now we've determined where the fuse panel is going to go. It's not mounted there, but we know where we want our, our, our wires to be terminated so that it could be at the fuse panel. We go to that place and you take a, a black and red wire and leave a little bit extra and run a, a, a black wire and a red wire to wherever you're going to have an end run. So let's say this is a USB charger. 
And then you take another black wire and red wire and you run it to the next spot where you're going to have something in. Let's say that this one is a cigarette lighter or a cigar lighter. That's fine. And then we take another black wire and red wire and you run it to where you're going to have a light, maybe a reading light over the bed. And then if you have a light switch, you take a black wire and red wire and you run it to where you're going to have a light switch. And you've done that and you've got it concealed. And please watch the video at the end of this video for roughing in the wiring. You've got to run this stuff protected inside the walls and protected, and it's got to be all done properly. And watch it as well, because you see what's happening down here? After it's all done, you won't know which wire is which. You've got to label it. That's all covered in the roughing in video. The last wires we need to pull in are the wires that go to the light from the light switch. So what we do is once we've pulled our initial wire to where the switch is, we pull a wire from where the switch is going to be to where the light's going to be. Now the question is, what kind of wire are you going to pull? And for most of your van, you're going to be pulling the same kind of wire. There's two things you need to do first off. One is to get red wire and the other is to get black wire. You need red and black because you need a positive and a negative. It just makes it easier if you keep it all straight. You can run it all in the same color, but it'll drive you crazy trying to figure out which is which later on. So get red wire and black wire. You can buy a spool of each, or it's possible to buy a spool with them already put together, attached as a pair, for it makes it easier to pull. Now, where are you going to get it? You can buy this off of Amazon if you wanted to. Or you could go to your local automotive store. Every town's got at least one of it. It's the same place the mechanics go to buy the parts they need when they're fixing a car. And you know what? The people who work there, they know all about this stuff. So go to someone local, tell them what you're trying to do, make a, give them a list of things that you think you need, and they'll help you along the way. They were good to me, they'll be good to you. It works out really well. It won't cost you very much more, if any more at all, and you're supporting your local economy. It's a really good deal red wire and black wire 16 gauge wire will do 13 amps which is an awful lot of stuff you don't i don't know what that means for sure but it's more than you're ever going to need for almost anything in the van except maybe if you're going to have a cigarette or a cigar lighter plug for a large uh, 12 volt cooler or fridge they may require a heavier wire. Do some research and see what you're going to be using in those places. If you're going to have them, you may have to buy a heavier wire, which would be a smaller numbered wire, maybe a 12 or a 14. Again, the appliance that you're thinking about getting will tell you what you need to do that way. It'll tell you what the requirements are. So you're going to need red and black wire, 16 gauge for sure, 12 gauge maybe, and then you're ready to start pulling. The last point I want to make is make sure that you leave a foot or so of extra wire every place you think you're going to finish, either at, a, at the fuse panel or at a light or at a light switch. Always leave extra wire, wire curled up because the last thing you want to do when you go to set your fixtures is find out that your wire's a little bit short. It'll be too late to make it any longer and you want to keep your connections and, and joints to as, um, an absolute minimum. So it's not that expensive. Leave a little bit extra wire left over. Well, that's the end of part one. Give us a like, a share, and a subscribe and be sure to watch this video for part two and on the other corner is the rough in video that's an overview for protection and labeling and all, all the rest of it you should watch all three not in order but before you get started watch all three be sure to all come back now